Good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Nichols. I'm a lof- lifelong resident of West Cobb County, and I'm here to speak in opposition to the rezoning of the Collins property on Dallas Highway, OBAD, formerly Z98. For the past 25 years, I've lived on Artillery Point in Garrison Ridge subdivision. I watched West Cobb grow from a peaceful farm community to what it is today. And for the most part, it's been good growth and very well planned. But this recent rezoning request has me very concerned. Uh, My primary attraction to Garrison Ridge back when I bought it was a long and winding, beautiful entrance to the subdivision. That entrance was lost several years ago when the Lowe's store and the adjacent strip mall was built. Uh, Now I'm obliged when I enter the subdivision to see the backside of Taco Mac, complete with dumpsters, gas meters, gutters, and such. Uh, My neighbors and I regularly are picking up trash, beer bottles, and other things that are left by the Taco Mac patrons. We now have a fireworks store there in that strip center. We also have a vape shop. Will an adult bookstore or tattoo parlor be next? I'm not going to bore you with the typical arguments about traffic, blasting, compromising of wetlands, destruction of Civil War relics and such. I'm simply here to ask for your consideration to consider the common sense aspects of the planned development and the detrimental effect it will have on me and my neighbors. It's my understanding that although Z97, I'm sorry, Z98 rezoning was denied back in May, recent mediation results results in leaving Garrison Ridge homeowners in an uphill battle to maintain our quality of life and our investments. Columbia Properties has argued that somehow this rezoning will violate the constitutional rights of Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins has every right to sell his property, but I do not believe that rezoning his property such that he will theoretically realize larger financial gains has anything to do with his constitutional rights. Rather, I would argue that rezoning of this property will be trampling on the rights of, and the quality of life of all of us who spent so many years investing in our homes in Garrison Ridge. <clears throat> the modified plan, as I understand it, includes a so-called 10-acre park. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a park. It's simply a wooded area behind a huge retaining wall on the backside of yet another commercial development. Any increase in tax revenues as a result of this development, I see, will probably be offset by the maintenance and patrolling of that so-called park. You've been presented with a petition signed by over 1,100 concerned Cobb residents, and this room has been packed with citizens who object to this rezoning each time it's been addressed. 95% of the residents in the three neighborhoods closest to this project and most affected by it, Garrison Ridge, Heritage Oaks, Chestnut Ridge, are all opposed to this rezoning. In my opinion, you cannot ignore the overwhelming concern by so many that approving this rezoning will be a huge, irreversible mistake. Granting this request defies common sense, and I'm respectfully requesting that you deny the rezoning, OB-80. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Jack Hassard. Good morning. Uh, Thank you very much for enabling me to speak today. My name is Jack Hassard. I live in Heritage Oaks. I'm also Professor Emeritus at Georgia State University. What that means, Emeritus, means I'm old. Um, I wrote a report last year that summarized many of the things that were just said. Um, 
I titled it The Building of a Perfect Storm, which was a metaphoric title for what is happening at Garrison Ridge. <clears throat> the report itself is 36 pages long. It's based on my research in collaboration with the citizens that live in the three com communities that abut the Collins property. This report <clears throat> was presented last year, well, actually earlier this year, to the commissioners, to the planning commission, and it was read and studied. And as a result, not just of this report, but of many of our presentations, you denied the Collins approach to trying to rezone this land. And so, interestingly enough, the plan that they are presenting is included in our report. We found out last year that this third plan is what I call it. It's where you have a shopping center, a wooded area, and a very, very big pond. We have this in this report, which was documented last May. I also calculated how much overburden and rock would be removed to flatten this land so that it is at the same elevation as Dallas Highway. Now, believe it or not, you probably were not told how much rock and overburden will be removed. But I will tell you. Um, the rock there is very heavy. It's dense. And um, so when you start moving uh, cubic yards of it, you end up with tons of rocks. In fact, we even calculated it would take about 20,000 truckloads to remove all of this material. Now, there's another thing that's very interesting about this project. <clears throat> the county has invested enormous amounts of money and put it in the form of a map, but it's really data. It's information, and it tells how the land should be zoned. And it turns out, <clears throat> right along Garrison Commons, there's a stop sign, literally, but figuratively, there's a stop sign that says no more commercial building beyond the Taco Mac strip zone. Now, that was done for a purpose. It was part of the, it's called the Neighborhood Activity Center, which is very big. Collins and his lawyers claim that they're going to build a step-down size shopping center. That's not true. Their shopping center will be 80,000 square feet. Taco Mac is 20,000 square feet. So instead of a step down, it's a step up. The other thing is that the flattening of this ridge will have severe effects on erosion, runoff, and will create water problems that are very difficult to resolve. And in fact, if you look at many of the new developments that are going on in West Cobb, water is a big issue. And finally, uh, I want to also comment that one of our engineers who will speak next, Tony Dopkin, a brilliant man who has spent hours and hours studying this, has found out that in order to build this shopping center and have a park, there will be slopes. You'll drive Mr. up to Hazard, a thank you. Your parking time is lot. Up. Thank you very much for hearing what I had to say, and I hope that you will stick with your original intention, which was to deny thank this you, project. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Herbert Dopkin. <laughs> Thank you.
Three bones. Uh, can I have a hand mic, please, too? Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Tony Depkin. I live in Chestnut Ridge across from Dallas Highway uh, and uh, across Dallas Highway from OB80. First, I want to thank the Board of Commissioners for voting down five to nothing the original Z80, uh, Z98 plan in May. And I encourage you to do the same for the new plan, OB-80. I'm going to be presenting a number of engineering considerations. I even have a three-dimensional model of the critical space, which is right behind outlet, outlet, outlot number two. And I'd be happy to show it to you or discuss these things further with either you gentlemen or someone who you designate. Uh, I'm, I've also been down and we've talked with the uh, Cobb <coughs> DOT uh, engineers and uh, someone else will talk about that in more detail. Okay, could I have the uh, first picture there? Okay. Uh, this is a picture of Z98 right here. The red line is residential. 77% of the perimeter of Z98 is surrounded by residential. Just this black line over on the side is the commercial area, which is, as everyone knows by now, Taco Max, a strip mall, and a huge Lowe's. Notice everywhere else is residential. Garrison Ridge, Heritage Oaks, Heritage Oaks, Three Houses, and Cher uh, uh, Chestnut Ridge. Now, you've already heard that 90% of all the people <coughs> in these three developments <coughs> signed petitions against uh, uh, Z98 and for any commercial development on that lot. 2% were for it, and 7% either we couldn't reach or abstained. Uh, now, um, any commercial rezoning of OB-80 uh, is not consistent with the county future land use plan. And uh, I want to show you again the perimeter here. 77% is residential. Now, re residential housing could easily be built on OB-80, and we, pre we repeatedly told uh, Commissioner Weatherford, Skip Gunther, and Columbia that we would consider any residential development, including RSLs, and our requests were not honored. Uh, I'm a retired engineer with 40 years of practical experience, and I have Columbia's latest drawings, if I could have the second figure up. And uh, <clears throat> this is very much a... Uh, non-professional engineering drawing, but it really does show the points. Unlike Parkside, which is a relatively flat uh, 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 land, OB80 is a very steep hill, and I can show you that very readily here. This is a, a drawing. This is the height of the land. This is a side view, and this is west to east. Here is the present slope of the land, this line right here, the dark line. What will happen is this is the uh, finished product according to the Columbia drawings. I have them here if anybody wants to look at them as well as the model. And uh, <clears throat> this is after blasting, and blasting will definitely be required, and lots of it. Uh, and this is before blasting. About <coughs> 400,000 tons of... Uh, Rock and dirt will have to be moved from here to there. And according to Columbia's borehole drawings, on their drawings, they will have to bore in many places, the deepest bore being 42 feet. That's four stories high worth of rock. It's like cutting a, a cut on a big highway. This is not small scale. 500, sorry, 400,000 tons, 20,000 truckloads. Most of the dirt, however, will probably be moved, they'll probably have a rock crusher on site to move the rock from here to put it there. To make a long story short, um, uh, they will cut the east half of the hill away, or it's from here to here, that's right through the top of the mountain, 1,100 feet right through the top of the hill, not one side, not one foot or the other, right through the top. And 
they'll fill in this valley over here. This is 995 feet to get the average of 1040, which is their plan. I can show you the drawings. Okay, could I have the uh, next uh, slide, please? And this is the last one. Are we going to get it in or not? No. Okay, we, we'll, 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 we'll do it this way. This is a photograph. Mr. Depkin, your, your time has expired. Okay, may Thank I you. make the conclusion? This is the before and after view of the blasting. This is a 30-foot cliff over Dallas Highway. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Alan Cello. Good morning, my name is Alan Sella. I too am a member of Garrison Ridge and here to talk about case OBO 080. But I'll be brief, I only have one point to bring up this morning and I believe it's a point that's never been uh, brought to the attention of the commission before today. The subject is traffic, but you've already heard all, all of the uh, previous concerns about the higher volume of traffic and the congestion that will be induced by the Columbia proposed development from the Dallas Highway side. What I don't believe is brought, uh, has been brought to the attention of the commission is the amount of cut through traffic. Uh, Garrison Ridge has two entrances. The one that everybody focuses on is the entrance point, the ingress and the egress from Dallas Highway that'll cut through the middle of the existing Tacomac and Lowe's. And of course, if this proposal goes through, the shopping center on the opposite side. However, Garrison Ridge has two entrance points. On the northwest backside, <coughs> we have an entrance that is accessible from Barrett Parkway. So my wife and I have lived in Garrison Ridge subdivision for 25 years now, and what we have experienced and have observed is ever since the Tacomac and Lowe's went in, we get an increased volume of cut-through traffic from southbound traffic on Barrett Parkway, cutting through the back <coughs> of our entrance so that they can make an unsignalized turn into Taco Mac and Lowe's. From my perspective, I think it's easily easy to predict that adding a much larger and a second shopping center on the opposite side of that Garrison Commons entrance point is just going to simply induce a higher volume of cut through traffic through our neighborhood, even more so than what Taco Mac and Lowe's has already induced itself. So for that reason, uh, there's been many reasons that has been brought to the attention of this commission, but and traffic has been one of them, but I would ask that you also consider the higher volume of cut-through traffic through Garrison Ridge is another opposing point to this proposed development. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Gabriela Coroneos. Honorable com commissioners, my comments are related to OB80 today and related to traffic, which I know is a subject that you really don't like, but I must share these thoughts with you. Would you share, your name, would you share your name for us? Please? Oh, yes, Gabriela Coroneos. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm from Heritage Oaks. Thank you. Okay. Traffic congestion already exists within the, the area, particularly at Barrett Parkway in Dallas, and it's about to skyrocket. OB80 will attract uh, 3,100 new car trips per day to this already heavily congested area. Parkside Shopping Center, one mile to the west, which opens next month, is anticipating 4,000 new tr car trips daily. That's 7,100 additional cars and trucks that will flood our area with no allowance for future infrastructure improvements. Last week, I met with Amy Diaz and Jane Strickland at Cobb DOT. Cobb DOT's only recommendation for OB80 was to widen Garrison Commons to three lanes with four lanes at the Dallas Highway Light. We ask that this recommendation be, required, be a required stipulation in the OB uh, case before the December 20th vote. This DOT recommendation alone gives insight as to how this one development will greatly impact and change the quiet nature of the existing Garrison Commons subdivision.
No changes were recommended to Old Dallas Road across Dallas Highway heading towards the Chestnut Ridge subdivision. It's still two lanes. The, opposed, the proposed Garrison Commons complex doesn't fit the requirements to be a commercial node according to the land use plan. The property is outside the defined existing commercial node. It goes beyond the residential commercial node cutoff delineated by Lowe's Taco Mac to the east. No changes were recommended at Heritage Oaks entrance. No light, no merge lanes, nothing. This will lead to unbearable backups and U-turns possibly for us with thousands of new car trips added daily. Heritage Oaks residents and school buses risk getting broadsided by increased traffic on a 15 degree downhill grade from OB80. Waiting until someone is killed is too late to fix this. Many discussions have taken place with the county over the years regarding a light to no avail. Funny how Parkside was able to get a new light just west of Dallas and Castile to help allow customers to access their commercial property. Garrison Roads, Commons Road is the only truck entrance for large 18-wheeler rigs entering Lowe's because of the tight turns elsewhere. With OB80, we will have a mixture of large rigs and small trucks going not only into Lowe's complex, but into OB80. The, this traffic will be combined with passenger cars from shoppers and the cars and school buses of residents of Garrison Ridge trying to get in and out of their community. All this traffic will result in a traffic chokeholds at Garrison Commons Light that will back up to the public's target light and then beyond to the barest Dallas intersection and downhill to Heritage Eggs. The letter of stipulations contains no language as to restricting delivery times, trash pickup, etc. OB80 is bordered on three sides by uh, th three subdivisions and several private homes. OB80 is a site plan that is unworkable because the site's topography does not allow any future curb cuts to be added later as congestion grows. Uh, the mediated settlement plan, plan to be voted on you by December 20th was unofficially floated around before the May vote, in fact, back in March, but never filed by Columbia with the county. Everyone at Garrison Ridge, Chestnut Ridge, and Heritage Oaks was as opposed to it then as they are now. The so-called park is an empty wooded lot, which is where a deep buffer would have been required anyway, but with all the land being removed and flattened, many of the trees in this park area will be torn down and new trees planted. We West Cobb homeowners also have constitutional rights that county officials ought to recognize, and we ask you to vote no to OB80. A couple of other observations. Home Depot, Walgreens, and Pikes. They have two traffic lights and five egresses, or curb cuts. Lowe's Publix, two traffic lights, six egresses. Target Staples Burger King, three traffic lights, seven egresses. OB80, uh, one traffic light, two egresses, with only one way to make a left turn going east onto D to Dallas Highway. And we anticipate the people trying to get out of this. Ms. Coroneos, thank you. Thank your you. time has expired. Thank you very much for your time, and happy holidays to all of you. Thank you, ma'am. Same to you. And the last speaker is Christine Dawson. Good morning, Chairman Lee and County Commissioners. My name is Christine Dawson, and I would like to offer some of my thoughts regarding case OB80, formerly Z98, a proposed rezoning at the northwest corner of Dallas Highway and Garrison Commons. I own my home at 136 Infantry Way in Garrison Ridge. Before purchasing my home, just over three years ago, I conducted careful research on my house, the neighborhood, and the area. Among the items I reviewed were the USGS topographic maps to determine my house's elevation above Mud Creek and the locations of the nearest fire hydrant and fire station. I visited the neighborhood at different times of the day and on different days of the week to determine how busy or quiet the streets were. I noticed that the Collins property, the subject of OB80, <coughs> at the entrance to my potential new neighborhood was for sale and I investigated its zoning. 
I was satisfied that no development would impinge on my quality of life or enjoyment of my new home when I found it was zoned R20 for residential development. Furthermore, the county's comprehensive land use plan called for it to remain suburban residential in character. I did my research and I purchased my home with the knowledge that my investment would be safe from undesirable development nearby. I was the historic preservation officer in a county planning department for nine years. And one of our goals was to provide applicants with predictability in the decisions that were made regarding permits, land development plans, and the like. Zoning codes provide a significant measure of predictability to property owners regarding the types of development and uses that are permitted on their and others' properties. After all, a lot of money, people's livelihoods, is tied up in real estate. The predictability of decisions made by governing bodies regarding real estate is vitally important to the stability of those investments. As I said, I did my research and I relied upon the assigned zoning of my own and the Collins properties in my decision making process. Therefore, a change in the zoning to this property is not only inappropriate for reasons to which others have and will testify, but it removes the elements of predictability and reliability in Cobb County land use decisions. If I cannot rely upon Cobb County to uphold its own land use policies and plans, I and many others will not be inclined to purchase property or otherwise invest in Cobb County. While some tout Mr. Collins' so-called right to sell his property for the highest possible price, which per the United States Supreme Court is not a right, what about my rights as a property owner? Cobb County presumably has formulated land use policies and plans, including zoning codes, in order to provide a framework for orderly, predictable development. If the property owners of Cobb County cannot rely upon the county's plans and policies, why does the planning division exist? Why would anyone purchase property here if there's no predictability? Most people's homes are their largest single investment and the rezoning of the Collins property will jeopardize the value of hundreds of homeowners' investments. I respectfully request that you deny the proposed rezoning as it represents an inexplicable choice insofar as predictability and reliability are concerned. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Melissa O'Brien and I represent West Cobb Advocate. Members who participate in our Facebook page are overwhelmingly in opposition to Other Business 80. <coughs> it is no secret that since the economy has picked up that developers have seen West Cobb as a cash cow for development. We have stood before you numerous times asking you to scale back the size and scope of developments because of the sheer volume of requests inundating our community with traffic and the loss of our quality of life. You, as a collective board, cannot continue to look at each individual rezoning application as if it were in a vacuum. That is why a comprehensive land use plan exists and why it is not merely a guide, as we have been told by our commissioner, but rather a roadmap for responsible development. The residents of this community have a growing discontent for the lack of adherence to a comprehensive land use plan and Cobb County Code. For years, we the people have used what is our only reference point when purchasing property to assist us in our home buying decisions. The land use plan and zoning designations are a fundamental tool we use when purchasing property in this county. The residents of Garrison Ridge, Heritage Oaks, and Chestnut Ridge did, did just that. They looked to see what it was zoned around them before making a decision about where to purchase their home, for most of them their primary investment. To ignore the text amendment that was placed on this parcel and dramatically upzone is denying existing homeowners their constitutional rights. It dramatically changes the character and keeping of their community, the financial and, mo and emotional incentive for purchasing their homes and wanting to reside in Cobb County. This board cannot continue to ignore the rights of existing property owners merely because each individual owner does not have the financial ability or the will to fight litigation. It is your job to protect the citizens of this county, and your tools exist in the form of code and the land use plan. 
Let's look at both sides, too. Mr. Collins has made a decision to buy land that was zoned residential. No one disputes his right to build on his land as zoned. Commissioner Weatherford, in mediation, removed the more appropriate residential senior living component. Mr. Collins' decision to purchase residential land that is largely granite was his financial speculation and his alone. When the proposed text amendment capped the commercial note adjacent to his property, we were unable to find any letters in opposition from Mr. Collins from the proposed change. Now we are expected to believe that, that Mr. Collins' property rights are more, have more value than the rights of adjacent homeowners, that the land use plan does not apply to Mr. Collins. Since when is it the county's job to ensure the homeowner's highest price for their land? Why is it that co the county can spend thousands of dollars on taxpayer money creating a land use plan and that in order to ensure the county upholds it, the general public has to hire an attorney? Why can't the county spend our taxpayer dollars devising what it calls a mediated settlement that does not allow the adjacent homeowners to be present to state their case and ultimately deliver a plan that benefits both the developer and Mr. Collins and still harms the quality of life and the value of the property of the adjacent homeowners, including a variance that, that allows a code that to a code to allow developments on Sunday. I did research about automobile oriented neighborhoods. Columbia, property likes, Columbia Properties likes to tout that commercial developments benefit adjacent landowners, but it actually depends on the type of business and the type of neighborhood. In fact, commercial properties do better in areas where mass transit exists. We have none on Dallas Highway. They also do better where there is no, not long stretches of sidewalks and two-lane highways. <coughs> Further, while high-end improves home values, that is not the product that Columbia Property delivers. That is what they promised our community two years ago, but what we received were off-price retailers. The truth is the type of commercial pockets the upscale, upscale lifestyle centers Columbia Properties promised to create is not realistic in our community. We don't have the demographic for it, and the way our community is spread out is not conducive for it. In fact, we don't need it, as was proven on Black Friday, when both the avenues and the Target shopping centers were less than active. So the question is, whose side are you on? Are you here to uphold the county's land use plan and codes and the property values and the quality of life for the 274 adjacent property owners, or are you siding with the developers once again? We have been told by our commissioner that he must follow the law, so let's do that if it means the county challenges this in court. We have the land use plan and the code, which clearly states this type of where this type of de development should go. If we don't have that, then how can anyone purchase land with confidence in Cobb County anymore? And why have rezoning? If this board is not the final arbitrator, then let's change the process so everyone can understand the end game. The citizens of West Cobb are ready for you to stand up for the land use plan and for the rights of existing residents. We, the taxpayers of Cobb County, want you to spend our tax dollars to defend the land use plan and to protect our quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The next speaker is Don Asa. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I'm Don Asa, a 19-year resident of Garrison Ridge Subdivision in West Cobb, treasurer and uh, a longtime member of our HOA board. I'm here to urge the commissioners to vote against other uh, business item 80 next Tuesday, which of course is the mediation plan that has been achieved uh, stemming from last year's Z98 zoning case. There's absolutely no uh, question that the overwhelming majority of homeowners in the three subdivisions that surround the property in question are against this mediation uh, proposal, as well as a wider spe a spectrum of uh, homeowners across West, West Cobb. Before the mediation plan was even negotiated, one would think that some feedback would have been sought from the homeowners who would be most affected by this case. No one from Cobb County ever sought any input from us. In fact, we were excluded by the court from even offering any input, as well as in the mediation hearing. 
Early on, we homeowners in Garrison Ridge stated that we are not in any way trying to impede the sale of the 24 acres of land owned by Mr. Collins. To the contrary, in 2014, the board of directors of Garrison Ridge received an invitation from a realtor and a residential developer who was looking at the Collins property to develop it residentially. The developer proposed to build high-end homes and wanted to know if our subdivision had any objections to their plans. Our board had no concerns. In fact, we believed that such a development might benefit our subdivision and possibly increase our home values. Those who are telling you that there has been no interest in the Collins property for, except for commercial development are simply not being truthful with you. We have firsthand knowledge that there is interest in that property. Last January, District 1 Planning Commissioner Skip Gunther met in my family room with about a dozen residents from the three adjacent subdivisions. Skip Gunther introduced to us the zoning concept of an open space community. He suggested that such a development would allow homes to be built on that property and likely would save areas where there are known Civil War earthworks. This was a very acceptable option to all of us. Of course, its viability is contingent upon Mr. Collins his being willing to negotiate a fair selling price for his property, which for his entire lengthy ownership has been zoned R20, and for which he has paid taxes at that rate. Now the argument has been made to us that building homes on the ridge is going to totally flatten it anyway, so that we ought to just get over it. While we acknowledge that Building homes on the ridge will destroy some of the trees and some of the existing land features. The destruction that would be caused by building homes is absolutely nothing compared to what Columbia Properties pro proposes to do to build a shopping center. Building homes on the ridge will not generate 3,200 cars into our area every day, along with massive delivery trucks. Building homes on the ridge will not create a profusion of left turns and U-turns to access the area. Building homes will not necessitate building a detention pond that is the size of a, of a football field. We urge you to reject this mediation proposal. Those of us who live within the shadow of the ridge can also argue we have constitutional rights regarding the protection of our properties dropping this massive commercial development in the center of an area that has been zoned residentially for decades will hurt us. And for that very reason, the county departments who studied this issue last spring all recommended denying the zoning proposal. And the planning commission, when they looked at all of the recommendations from the county departments as well as their own insights unanimously denied the proposal 1100 residents Eason, signed opposition expired. petitions thank you sir again we urge you not to settle for this mediation proposal thank you the next speaker is mark belden Good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners, and um, County Manager. Um, my name is Mark Belden. I'm speaking about OB80, which is, seems to be the topic of the day. I live in District 1 in Heritage Oaks that borders Mr. Collins' land on the west side. I've lived in Heritage Oaks for 20 years and in Cobb County for 31. I am against this proposed settlement of the lawsuit filed by Columbia and Mr. Collins versus Cobb County. Uh, we are appreciative of, of your unanimous denial of Columbia's application last May. I wanted to point out some things, though. If the Commission votes to accept this mediated settlement, the following precedents will be established for our area as well as all of Cobb County. Converting Mr. Collins' land from R20 to NAC is not in compliance with both the 2030 land use plan and the draft version of the 2040 plan. 
Uh, this particular intersection of Dallas Highway at Garrison Commons is explicitly called out as a text amendment in the 2030 plan as the end of a commercial node. Uh, Mr. Collins' land is 24 acres surrounded on three sides by established residential subdivisions bordered by Garrison Commons Drive. Two previous one, District 1 commissioners inserted the language to protect the Garrison Ridge and Zachary Wood subdivisions and Mud Creek. The language was inserted as a step down in intensity from the Lowe's and public centers. In April, staff comments on, on Z98 were clear. Quote, Cobb County has been very consistent and careful with rezoning actions on Dallas Highway to limit commercial development to defined nodes. So why is the current Taco Mac NRC on only one side of the Collins property being used as a reference point to justify this change from R20? Garrison Commons is a two-lane curved entry road from Garrison Ridge uh, into Garrison Ridge and Zachary Wood subdivisions. It's not an arterial road, and the intersection with Dallas Highway is not a commercial node. The fact that there is a traffic signal there does not make it a commercial node, nor justify new commercial development next to it. Garrison Commons was actually the result of an easement agreement in 1995 between Mr. Collins and John Whelan Holmes, who was the previous owner of the Lowe's land. This road gave Mr. Collins more direct access to Dallas Highway from his driveway and more direct access for the Zachary Wood subdivision. Rezoning his land would mean that the county is abandoning the widely accepted concept of only putting commercial developments at true established commercial nodes. This concept has long been followed in West Cobb, and if abandoned, every commercial developer now has a reason to pursue new retail centers at non-commercial nodes. There are four residential parcels, all that are connected directly across Dallas Highway from Mr. Collins' land. If this mediated settlement is accepted, what is stopping from one or all four of these homeowners from selling out to a developer for rezoning to commercial? These four homeowners could sue the county in a heartbeat and based on the fact that the BOC overrode the land use plan directly across Dallas Highway from them. Then anyone can likely see the domino effect westward on Dallas Highway as other residential owners sell out to commercial developers. What I'm describing is not speculation. This is exactly what happened in East Cobb in the late 80s and early 90s. A large majority of West Cobb homeowners that I know decided to live out here to escape the sprawl and congestion. We've heard recently that Mr. Collins has indeed approached more than once to sell his property for residential development in the past three years. For some reason, he chose not to move forward. There is ample U.S. and Georgia Supreme Court case law supporting the county's legal position in zoning cases. The citizens of Cobb deserve their rights to be defended in zoning challenges to the established land use plan. Mr. Collins, Columbia, and their attorney have the burden to show by clear and convincing evidence that the existing R20 zoning causes them a detriment or a taking and is not substantially related to the public health and safety and welfare. The county does not have this burden, so a settlement makes little sense and only encourages more lawsuits. I respectfully ask that all of you vote against this mediated settlement next Tuesday and send it back to the trial judge. Thank you. The last speaker is Kelly Gambrell. Good morning. My name is Kelly Gambrell, and I'm president of People Looking After Neighborhoods. Cobb County staff are highly qualified and unbiased in their analysis of rezoning applications as they strictly consider code and land use compliance to render the recommendation of approval or denial. Rezoning application Z98 of 2015 had 97,000 square feet of commercial with RSL at a density of 5.043 units per acre. Staff recommended denial and it was upheld by this board 5-0 in May of 2016. Reasons for denial per staff are the applicant's rezoning proposal, quote, will not permit a use that is suitable in view of the use and development of adjacent and nearby properties will have an adverse effect on the properties to the north and west, is not in conformity with the policy and intent of the Cobb County Comp Plan, which delineates this property as being in low-density residential. A mixture of commercial and senior living residential, neither of which is compatible with the Cobb County Comp Plan as it is presented. The requested RSL is allowed in LDR. However, the overall residential development should be compatible with neighboring residential uses. 
Most of the proposal is not in compliance with the Cobb County Comprehensive Plan. OB 80 is a result of a mediated settlement to prevent further litigation, not a court decision. Questions as to the extent staff analysis were considered in this mediation arise as staff has recommended denial of the original application. The mediated site plan reflects 90,000 square feet of commercial, which is not allowed, and the originally proposed RSL component, which is compatible, completely removed. Within the last few weeks, residents have received an email response from Mr. Weatherford pertaining to their opposition to OB 80. The second to last sentence in Mr. Weatherford's email states, quote, if you would look at the facts, then I would welcome any solutions you may think of. These are the facts. The county has a county land use plan and has established where residential and commercial should be built. The county has a longstanding practice of step down zoning within a commercial node. Step down zoning places the most intensive use at the middle of the commercial center and then steps down the intensity as it transitions to residential. RSL has been used to complete the transition from commercial to residential. Chestnut Ridge, which is located across from the parcel, is an RSL that transitions from the commercial node on the south of Dallas Highway to residential. The node on the north side of Dallas Highway, starting at <coughs> Barrett Parkway, is an example of step-down zoning without an RSL. Publix, which is designated as a CAC, is 95,600 square feet. The end of the node contains the 18,700 square foot Garrison Ridge Shopping Center, zoned NRC, and adjacent to Garrison Ridge subdivision. OB80 requests that this board remove the NRC shopping, approve an NRC shopping center, which is almost five times the square footage of the Garrison Ridge Shopping Center. In comparison, the square footage proposed in OB80 is almost the same as the Publix, which is in an area designated as a CAC and is located at the corner of two four-lane roads. Mr. Weatherford's last sentence in his email states, quote, I must follow the law and not subject taxpayers to lawsuits, et cetera, thereby letting a court decide instead of elected representatives. However, Mr. Weatherford, you are failing to acknowledge the financial burdens you have placed upon the residents adjacent to undeveloped land. They are unable to write off the financial woes caused unto them to stand up and remind you, our elected official, that it is your responsibility to protect our rights as well. The property owner is not facing substantial detriment if OB80 is not approved. The land is still developable as zoned or RSL. In addition, it should be noted that in OB80, the buffer adjacent to the residential is a passive park, which will be accessible to the public and allow a steady stream of visitors into private backyards. When the avenues of West Cobb were mediated, a 150-foot undisturbed buffer was required. While the buffer has remained undisturbed, it fa still fails to provide privacy as litter, noise, and light pollution still impact those residents on Ramble Lane. Disregarding the land use plan and inconsistent policy has placed the county at legal risk as reflected in the number of constitutional challenges to zoning decisions. The Board of Commissioners is supposed to be the legal governing body pertaining to the laws and codes established by Cobb County. We request you uphold these standards and not mock their relevance to those who call Cobb County their home. Thank you. 